Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Tammy Tucky Show. We've taken a little bit of a break um, because I, I released an album. I don't know if y'all have heard, but uh, Glowing in Timeless Places is now officially out. And you can get a CD copy on my website at TammyTucky.com slash order. So I've been kind of busy doing a cabaret, promoting the album, being in another uh, stage show community theater. So I apologize. I've left you all alone and I, I really do apologize. But we are back and we have some more fun summer interviews coming this way. So we're first going to start out um, because now it feels like summer weather. Let's do a summer show at Animal Kingdom because Animal Kingdom just celebrated its 20th anniversary. And we're going to continue that celebration with someone who was the opening day Tarzan at the Tarzan Rocks production. So let's welcome performer and also artist John Coulter to the show. Welcome, John. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. If I could do that really you. well, that would have been amazing. But <laughs> I think the only person who could really do it well is Carol Burnett, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's so good to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. Well, here. we we were, we were, well, I was kind of fangirling to you last night when we were testing everything out that just <laughs> were, my family and I are huge fa fans of this show in particular. So just a pleasure to finally get to talk to somebody else who's been a part of it. So I'm especially a fan too. because, yeah, well, your <laughs> role in particular as Tarzan is, uh, it's, it's very interesting because I think Tarzan, I think the show really had a lot of firsts for Disney in many retrospects, right? So um, <laughs> so uh, let's actually, I just wanted to show a clip of, of what your entrance would have been. We don't have any footage of you, but my dad took so much home video footage. So this, what your footage you're going to see tonight is from our home videotapes. And then also photos are from John's collection. So let's just take a I look at uh, Tarzan's entrance. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> was my mom screaming <laughs> <laughs> uh, that brings back so many memories that's funny that's the, that's your opening that's your opening entrance which is pretty pretty amazing i, I would was. say that's a good opening right yeah we came down on a i think those are called zip lines i think that's what that's called a zip line mm -hmm. and are, are how how long are you waiting up there because there's this whole opening segment you're not in the in introduction of two no. worlds but um, um oh look you have your own little store <laughs> i brought the animals with me from the jungle perfect um <laughs> Yeah, well, we we enter at the very opening of the show. As soon as the curtains open, we're in a different costume and we're doing something called the Spanish web. Uh, 
at the beginning of the show, but you can't tell it's Tarzan or Jane because we're completely covered up. So we, after we do that number, the Spanish web, uh, and then we go, we climb up these, uh, this ladder, and then we do this thing called the cradle, which is another act. And then after that, then we run down, put on the wig, put on the loincloth, and then that's when I would come out and do the, the Tarzan part of the show. Okay. And, and and just to clarify, wigs are a pain in the butt. I, I've done many community theater and musicals in general, and mostly the women have to wear them. So what is it like putting on a wig and making sure that thing is secure? Right? Yeah. Well, it just added <laughs> an extra stress when you're doing that really quickly backstage in the dark, you know, but I did have somebody there to help me to make sure that it was going to stay on when I was flying around. Thank goodness. Like, yeah. I, it looks like it's big. Like, that wig <laughs> compared... Well, I think Elsmerelda's wig I had heard is very, very heavy. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you and hers tie for the yeah. heaviest wigs. It was, a, like. it was a big wig with those dreadlocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's let's take a step back because we have Tarzan. We have more to talk about with Tarzan. But you've brought in so many great photos of your, of your journey through Disney. So why don't oh. you tell us a little bit about, yeah. you know, auditioning for Disney? How did you get involved with Disney? Oh, my gosh. Well, I go way back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I was, I was actually going to college at U of A, and I was finishing two years there. And I was going to move to California to go to the Art Center College of Design to pursue my art. And so I, during finals at U of A, I left early and drove down and auditioned for the Electrical Parade uh, for Disneyland. Ooh. So that was my first show doing the Electrical Parade as, um, I guess you're supposed to say I was friends with Prince Charming. That's a technical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I just stayed yeah, there for a couple fine. more years and did other parades and shows there. I did the opening, that Prince Eric is the opening of the Fantasmic show. I opened all these shows because I'm so old that I go way back. To, but what's crazy is they're still doing Fantasmic after all yep. these years. Yeah. After so, all that time. And there's another was your bad job, wig. <laughs> was your job to, to, to uh, similar to the Walt Disney World version, do you bring a blanket to cover Ariel before the fireworks go off? Is that what uh, they do in Disneyland? No, it's completely different because the fireworks are further back. So we didn't have that issue at Disneyland. Oh, good. So she wasn't covered at all, like. Yeah, we just exited, I think, the boat at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that, there you go. Because I, I, I've yet to see the Disneyland version of Phantasmic yet. I, I don't really yeah. like loud noises. So I just, I hightail it <laughs> to a ride. I'm like, bye. <laughs> and That's the crowds, funny. it's like, I'll just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and so and so your uh, your friends, your best friends with uh, Prince Eric in the photo on the right, where was that taken? Uh, the photo on the right was Cinder. It was called a show. It was called Cinderella Bration, and that was a wedding. Cinderella's wedding, and that was in Tokyo Disneyland. And we did that wedding three times a day. They did big Dove releases, and it was a pretty big show back then. Now things are even bigger because that was years ago. Oh my uh, gosh, she got married! Yay! She I did. love a good wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I've I never been married had, so many we times. Had a I, oh my, I can't even imagine, John. Good Lord. <laughs> but you're such a great pal to be married to. So I think it works out just fine. Oh, so. well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at some more photos. So oh, tell us a little bit more about, uh, about these shots and what parades they are. That was Prince Philip in the Christmas parade. And then the other one was the party gras, which was the 35th anniversary. So it goes way back. So that was the, <laughs> the carnival kind of parade with the big blow up floats, which they also did that one in Tokyo as well, but it started in Anaheim. Oh, wow. Like so they did a Mardi Gras celebration. I didn't even know that they yeah. did that in Disneyland. That's really yeah. great. Yeah. Well, um, we have a couple people in the chat. I, I, I always forget to remind people, but you are more than welcome to join us in the YouTube chat and ask your questions as we go along. Uh, Caleb says, hi. Hello, Caleb. How are you? Hey, and Eric, Eric says, I'm your fan, John. Hi, oh, man. amazing. <laughs> Hi, Izzo says, Sorry, I'm late. It's all right, we're all yeah. here. That's all that matters. Yeah. Good evening. This is my dad. He has the he's the reason we have the film footage. So, thank you, amazing. <laughs> I love these shots. These are really great. So let's let's go to some Tarzan shots here. These are oh, these are great too. <laughs> that one is backstage on a hill behind the theater. There was a hill, 
Uh, so we just ran back there with Turk and took some fun photos. And then <laughs> that's me doing my my pre-recorded yell. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that was really me yelling, but it was it was a recording. Oh, well, we'll never know <laughs> so who it is. Of, oh, well. <laughs> a lot of faking. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, K.O. Johnson says, did you get to keep the loincloth? Oh my God. I did not. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people, I, I know that there were some princesses where they changed their outfits over the years just to be less revealing. And I think that that's great. Um, I just feel bad for what we were just talking about this. I feel bad for Tarzan because really in the film, this is all he wears, except when he wears his father's suit, which right. is actually pretty dapper. So, yeah. but, uh, but everybody expects it to be Tarzan. So it's like, how do you, you know, how do you, I, I do, I do feel bad. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, I can't yeah. even imagine. It's I would pretty be much so embarrassed. Just the loin cloth. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. And it was pretty back then. That was pretty bold of Disney. Cause there were, I remember mothers in the audience would cover children's eyes, which I thought was so silly. Cause <laughs> they didn't see it as anything sexual, of course, but no, no. parents, I don't know. They would, they were like, see oh. in the audience and they would cover people's eyes back then. <laughs> I, I, the question is, what were they expecting? It is Tarzan. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, exactly. I would only think, unless like you're out of country and you're not, you know, well, well versed in the books. But, you know, that's another thing. Yeah, who doesn't um, know oh, what Tarzan wears? Eric says, hi, John. I'm a big fan of you and Tarzan. And I'd like to ask a few questions. What did it feel like when you went on stage? Ah, okay. And how did I become Tarzan? How long did you train for the stunts? I was living in New York at the time and I was modeling there and I just wanted to take a quick break and go to Orlando. I thought I'd do this cute little show for a couple months and then come back to continue my career in New York. Little did I know that it was going to be two months of intense uh, training, which I had, I, you know, I signed up for the show and it was just kind of like a uh, strength, strength kind of audition where you just had to do push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups and do all this kind of uh, stuff like that. There wasn't any anything that led to me uh, knowing that I was going to have to go to this Cirque du Soleil. Well, it wasn't a Cirque du Soleil, but a Cirque camp for two mm -hmm. months to learn these acts. Um, Jeez. Luckily, I had so they... some gymnastics background when I was really young. I think that did help. But um, yeah, it was two months of training for that. Good Lord. So, so <laughs> when they... I'm so surprised. So that wasn't initially explained to you. I guess it was added on later or. Uh, they didn't know because they were still creating the show when they had the audition. So even during the rehearsals back after I got the job and was in Orlando, they actually had us. We had to learn how to uh, skateboard because we were going to skateboard around this whole huge ramp. And I was a disaster with a skateboard. <laughs> I could not do it. And. <laughs> They ended up cutting that part, thank goodness, because I don't know if I would have ever been able to pull that one off. I could do the whole yeah. aerial act, but skateboarding, I couldn't pull off. So they had cut that from the show. Yeah. Because <laughs> I guess in the movie, it looks like he's surfing or skateboarding through the vines. So yes. I think that's what they had in their mind, but then it just didn't work in the show. I'm glad they moved to rollerblading. I think that that's, I oh, think for that's the monkeys? cooler. Yeah. Yeah, for the monkeys. Yeah. Like they did some type of, and those were really great stunts. Like when oh, they were yeah. like going, like jumping. They were like professional people. doing flips and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. That was wild. That was yeah. wild. But then, but then you guys are going up in the air, kind of doing similar a Cirque du Soleil. So let's, let's watch a clip right. so people can understand where, before we even get into this, because <laughs> I have many questions. So let's, let's watch a clip. <laughs>
So, oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> they look happy, like they're smiling. But good yeah. lord. Okay, this is this is meticulous. You you guys got to get it right. There's no netting. You're you're supporting one another. So, do you guys have before yeah. the show? Do you have like um? You know how they usually do a fight call? Do you have like um a a pre you know pre run of something beforehand or? We didn't actually. We would all just go out onto the stage and stretch and warm up and um. But we wouldn't actually test the equipment. I think we were pretty secure with, and, and you know, trusting the tech people and everything. But it's really just all in how you would wrap your wrists with uh, straps to get it so that you couldn't fall out. But if you didn't wrap correctly, yeah, then it was, then you would fall. Not going to be fun. No, yeah, not, <laughs> luckily that didn't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, that I was going to say because that that's. I would love to try something like that, but my biggest fear is I'd probably be like, let's just do it really close to the ground before we got to go all yeah. the way up. Because there's a part where you're going like, you're really swinging over yeah. that entire stage. So yeah. um, you're fearless for being able to do that. Honestly, uh, I, I don't know. I was back it. then. Now I'm probably a little more fearful, but back then I, I was just so excited to be doing it. <laughs> you're like, can, I, again, like, oh, geez, like this is the type of entertainment I really miss at Walt Disney World because I wish they had kept this show, but we were discussing it's like it was the heat because where the show is oh, is where Finding Nemo is, and that's now enclosed. Yeah, they enclosed <laughs> the whole reason. theater. Yeah, yeah. I was happy to only be wearing a loincloth because it was so hot out there. Oh God! So, <laughs> so how? What was the hottest it got at at certain point? Like, did they ever? I know I had heard you know some shows if they were out in the open they had no cover they wouldn't do them because the ground was so hot. Were there any times where they had to be like, okay, we gotta cancel a show because it's too hot or? Yeah, I never remember a show being canceled because we were under the you know we were in a theater even though it was covered. It was probably actually hotter for the audience. I think they probably had fans backstage for us. And we were, you know, in the dressing room right before the show, which was air conditioned. So, yeah, yeah they never canceled it for heat. Yeah, they didn't give you guys the ice cream. No. They gave us the ice cream. I was just telling you that. I got, we had our popsicles and our Mickey right. Mouse bars. That's and so it funny. was, it was great. You know what I mean? It worked for what we needed for a little bit, but you know, just, just missing that show in, in general. So the rehearsal process, um, so when do you start doing the, the aerobat, you know, just going up in the air, is that when you finally get to the stage or what type of rehearsal studio are you at? We learned the whole show out at some, some private home that had all of this, all these apparatuses in their backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would do it until our wrists were bleeding and then they'd have to stop because if you got blood on the straps, they wouldn't let you, I guess there were, you know, equity laws and stuff. So once there was blood on the straps, then we'd have to stop doing rehearsal or stop oh, training. Um, and that happened quite a bit because we were figuring out the show and the choreography. So it was, we were on those straps just all day long because we were trying to figure out what, what we, what we could do and what was possible and what looked like Tarzan and Jane. And so now it's, it was easier after we, created the show because then we already knew the the routine and then you would just learn that. So it did get easier as the show went on for the other, you know, the years to come. It, I think it was there from 99 to 2006. So it had a long run it considering did. other shows at Disney, not having the longest run. Right. So that, that, that was, a really that was long always, run. I would think I remember we walked up and we had heard because we saw the stage was closed and we're like, you've got to be kidding me. No, the show can't be gone. No, no. I, we really loved it. It was so great. And, and yeah. how long were you in the show? I did the show. I think I maybe only did it eight months. I didn't do it too long. I kind of just opened it and then left because I was, I had to rent a place in Florida. And I also had to rent a car the entire time. I was there because I was living in New York at the time and I didn't have a car. So um, it got expensive to rent a place in New York and Florida and the car. So I just, I just did it a short time, but I missed it. I didn't miss it. <laughs> well, how, how many Tarzans and Janes were there at, in rotation? Like, did they always had like a set of five or was 
were there a lot because it, for Disney shows, they usually have a lot of understudies or, you know, standbys right. just in case. But this is so particular in what you guys are doing. I think it's a little bit more dangerous. So how does that work? Yeah, there was always three Tarzans and we were only allowed to do, I think there might've been five shows a day and we were only allowed to do three because the equity rules. So there would at least be two Tarzans a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember that when we were rehearsing, awesome. there was a Tarzan that came from Vegas from the Cirque du Soleil show. And he saw me the first day of rehearsal. And he was like, oh, that guy's never going to make it to the show. Because I don't, I guess I, I had never done anything like that. So I probably was a, a hot mess. But Aww. then I ended up, I pulled it off. <laughs> John, you poor thing. <laughs> I know, honey, I got abuse from the other Tarzan. <laughs> how dare they right? you are really great and, and you, so you get to open it and and there's so much going on at the time and there's a lot of promotional materials they're doing so did disney ask you to do a lot of promotional materials like how did that work well it was funny they didn't because the what they you know tarzan had really deep set eyes so for the uh all the way up until previews they had me wear this dark smoky eyes and so, and they thought I looked more like Cindy Crawford. They told me, they're like, you, you look like Cindy Crawford, not Tarzan. So I didn't get to do the, <laughs> I know. So I didn't get to do the, like the brochure or any of the, the PR stuff. And then, um, then they cut the makeup it was there, and then they cut the eye makeup. So um, there was, was eye makeup, full, full, dark, smoky eyes. And I loved it, but they're like, no, 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 you don't, you look like Cindy Crawford. That's just not what we're going for. I thought you meant like <laughs> uh, like eye contacts. They did. no, uh, okay. no, like black, dark, like eyeliner and shadow, and because you know in the movie it's he has these really this uh, the deep set eyes, and I think that's what they were going it's all about for. The eyes. But I just look like glam Tarzan out there. <laughs> so they did cut that, and then as far as other promotional stuff. Um, there was a law that Edgar Rice Burroughs, who owns the licensing to Tarzan, created it. He said that Tarzan wasn't allowed outside of the jungle at that time. And then Disney's rule was that I couldn't have my nipples show. So that so I wasn't really allowed outside of the show. So we didn't do a lot of promotional stuff. Oh, that changed really? over the years. And they did put a vine yeah. over his chest, like for the parades. But. Way back then, because that was the very easier. first time they had ever had somebody so naked, you know, for Disney. <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> um, I, I was just going to say, you know, uh, the, you know, there's so many, you know, kids that get to see these shows and just are inspired. So I, I saw some pictures online. Some people got to go like backstage. They, they at Finding Nemo, they actually have a section where they have like a mural and you get to meet the cast. So yeah. apparently they had some cast photos. Did you have like a, a special moment with a kid that you remember that sticks out to you of meeting Tarzan? There was one moment where they brought one kid backstage and it was Rosie O'Donnell's son um, at the time. So that was the oh one kid God. I got to meet, which was fun. Because, you know, she was, I think she did the voice. She did. She was Turk. It wasn't her voice in the show, but it was in the movie. And yes. I didn't understand. Like, that's a question I would love to ask her. It's like, why didn't they let you do your own voice in the show? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So she I, wasn't I, there. I she just sent her. No, she was there, but she just brought her son to the show and then backstage to meet Tarzan. So did you meet Rosie too? Oh, wait. Hold on. I lost him. Oh, there you, okay, there you are. Am I here? <laughs> You're I was just going to say, did you meet Rosie too? I don't, you know, I, it's funny. I remember the kid, but I, I think it's only because I have a picture with him. Aww. So <laughs> I don't even remember Rosie, which you would think I would remember. But did, did, did any of the other cast members from the film get to come and see? I, not that I knew of. Yeah. Yeah. No. I wish Phil Collins would have been there because his music was so good. You know. Oh, yeah. I had heard from Billy Flanagan, who was one of the lead singers, that he was supposed to be there opening day and something happened where he just wasn't yeah. able to come. I was like, oh, God, though, Phil Collins, you're missing yeah. out. Right. <laughs> Here's some more photos. Oh, I, I, my I just, Do you know that she it, still works there? She's one of the stunt girls what? 
at the Indiana Jones show. And she's been there ever since. And she's still, she still doing, doing stunts. Marion? Yes. Yeah, she is. Isn't that oh amazing? Gosh. And she doesn't look any different. She has not aged a bit. Go I don't her. Know what her okay. Is. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> the bat show scary too, because you're jumping from like high, high buildings. And I'm like, I don't yeah. even want to be involved. Right. No way. I like run the yeah. other direction. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see some more shots. These are uh, well, monkeying around gone and monkeying around the serious and the non-serious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, that was when I had the makeup. That must have been the very first show. Cause that's when I still had the eye makeup on. Can you tell? <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> it looks funny. fabulous. You look so good. Oh, great. Well, as I said, like, you know, a lot of kids get to see the show. So here's a little clip. Um, I was sitting with, uh, I, I made friends with like anybody I met at Disney. So I was sitting with a little girl um, next to me and then my sister was on my mom's lap. So here's a little clip of my sister reacting to the show because we just love oh, it. So here's a little fun clip. <laughs> That is so cute. <laughs> we loved oh. it. I got to tell you, we just, oh, and I'm like so sad because I'm like, I want to bring my kids to come see the show. Oh, I know, right? That's they why it ran so something. long because people, people like you loved it. So we have we you to thank for it running as long as it did. I just, I just wish they had given it more of a chance to have, like, I think Tarzan, I wish he had more of like some type of space out there at Animal Kingdom. It like, I know, it makes that sense, been fun. right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah, in Africa, you know that. what I mean? Yeah. Right. And I wanted to bring up some of your um, some of your beautiful work that you've done as well, too, because not only are you a talented performer, but you're also um, you're also a, a talented artist. So I just wanted to bring up Thank some you. of these beautiful pieces of work that are on your website at johncolterdesigns.com, which I want to suggest to people. And the link is in the show notes below as well. Um, but why don't you tell us about, you know, getting into art and, and why, and you know, why you decided to kind of make a change? Uh, well, honestly, <laughs> the modeling, you know, the phone kind of just stopped ringing. I was like, what am I going to do? So I was doing some art for somebody else and I just happened to use the same printer and framer as Disney and they saw my work and they hired me on the spot. And it just was crazy how that happened. Cause I've, you know, I had dreamed as a child to, uh, that I always wanted to be a Disney artist. I just got Aww. kind of derailed and kind of took another path for a while, but it's it was like a full circle moment getting to illustrate you know, paint for Disney characters that I had played, you know, 20 years earlier. It's kind of <laughs> wild, you know, but it's it's so much And they're fun. inviting you to, to the Festival of the Arts, which is at Epcot. So you get to be there and get to meet with fans and 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 sell yeah. your work. What, 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 so what is that now? Fun. Disney's inviting you. <laughs> I know. Look at that. It's <laughs> Yeah, that this will be my, I think, 13th year at the festival. Um, and we do new pieces every year. That's where we introduce them. And it is just so much fun because, you, you know, it's kind of isolating being an artist now. Uh, it's not like oh. an entertainer where you're with this big cast and you get the love from the audience. So you're just yeah. like in this room at my studio. So it's so much fun to get out there and see people's reaction to my art. And, um, you know, it's just a lot of fun. It's all beautiful. Again, everybody, please make sure you head to his website. There's more wonderful photos and, and other treasures that he has ha, has on the website. And you can always ask John some questions. If you, if, if I haven't you. asked your question tonight, go ahead and reach out to John. Uh, I Barefoot oh. says, hi, John. Lisa, how are you doing? Thanks for... <laughs> <laughs> she goes to the festival every year. She, I think she's been there since I've done it. That's amazing. Oh, go, Lisa. She I need to come with you next artwork. time. Oh, that, now that's a fan right there. <laughs> I know. She's a friend. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> My dad says, Tammy just loved this show. Didn't Aww. I? Didn't <laughs> I? They never sold any merch for it. Like they have a merch cart for Finding Nemo, but they didn't have anything for Tarzan. No, and I had heard that I it's probably because of the 
the the copyright. Yeah, I'm sure that is why. Yeah. Which isn't nuisance. I would have had all of it if they did. Me too. <laughs> uh she says i do yay Hello again. Yeah. <laughs> so That's so what are, what is what is coming up next for you john that we can keep an eye out are you going to be at any other shows and selling your work or performing anytime soon i have let's see i'm i'll be at the festival again but that's not till january of 2024 so we have some time uh before that um and then June 6th, I'm in a documentary called All Male. No, All Man. All Man. <laughs> and it's okay. about the International Male uh, Catalog, the men's fashion catalog. And it's a documentary about the history of that catalog. And I worked for them for about 15 years. So uh, I have a small interview in that movie. Um, and it's an interesting documentary. And that streams June 6th on Amazon. Ooh, so, so all, fun. all man, all man, right? the international male story. Okay, it's perfect. Because I, I, I will, I will absolutely watch it for <laughs> John. Well, John I have about it. five seconds in the movie in the film, but um, the best five seconds, though. That's so right. there you go. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, before we get going, um, I, you know, I just why don't you mention all your social media pages and your website? Oh, I just want to make you. sure we have them all covered before yes. we head out. Follow me on Instagram. It's it's just under John Coulter, and it should just pop right up. And then, of course, Facebook is John Coulter, and then my website. Oh, YouTube. Oh, yeah, I'm on YouTube too. I did <laughs> during COVID. I did this John's Craft Corner. Oh, there's the cat. Um, and you know, I was just bored during quarantine and I have, so I have a little bit on YouTube. It's called John's Craft Corner, but don't judge me too hard for those. I was losing my mind during quarantine. <laughs> no, I saw some of them. I really liked them. Oh, you did? So oh, geez. I figured out a way YouTube lets you tag channels now in the description. So I think I tagged you. I think oh, I did okay. it right. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's crossed fingers. I know I'm, I'm still getting used to like all the updates. I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> I know she's like, um, dad, I think it's time to feed me. Probably. I know. <laughs> she's oh like, roar, God. ferocious. Right? Well, you know what I mean? John's got to get back to the jungle. I got to get back to England. I'm Janeing it out here and he's Tarzaning <laughs> it out here. Um, but John, thank you so much for being a part of the show. I know we've been yeah, trying to do this for you. forever. We have. I'm glad we finally got together. Thank you for being so patient and starting off the summer of interviews of the Tammy Tucky show. You are yes, so sweet. You're amazing. And congratulations on oh, like anniversaries for Animal Kingdom. I know Animal Kingdom uh, yeah, is a little bit older than the show, but right. we'll just say we'll just say 20 years is 20 years. Yes. <laughs> So thank you so much. And thank you, you everybody who is watching tonight. We appreciate yeah. all your questions and stay tuned because I'll be announcing some more interviews that'll be coming out towards the end of the month. And for the rest of the next couple of months, if you have any suggestions, you can head over to TammyTucky.com and message me at the contact page or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All Everything is in the show notes for John and I. So we'll see you guys on the flip side. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye, John. Thanks so much. See you later.